Hey, I'm back! I took a bit of a vacation, well, more of a workoutcation after I got back from the States and Bay Area Maker Fair and all. Uh, my dad and I biked up to the northmost point of Germany, which was eight days and a bit over a thousand kilometers. And I gotta tell you, after being on the bike for so long, dipping my toes into the North Sea just Mm, so good, so worth it. For now, I've got one more video from Bay Area Maker Fair before I'll make it back into my regular 3D printing video rhythm thing, and this video is actually about 3D printers. So I wanted to interview three 3D printer manufacturers at Banff. Adam 3D, not just because they were the ones who flew me over to the States, but also because they showed us some seriously nice machines. Printabot, who didn't just bring 3D printers, and lastly, Ono, Olo, whatever they're called now, and they're one of those companies who are promising, you know, smartphone-based resin 3D printing, where you actually put your phone in there and that's the only display that printer has. Only problem, the guys that were there didn't talk much and they also didn't really have a functioning machine to show, so I don't know, it just didn't make for a good interview. But I still have a great interview from Printabot, but first, let's check out what Adam 3D brought. I would have shown you the actual interview, but I did screw up the audio in that, so here's my take on what they had to show. Okay, so they arrived with three machines. Obviously, they make Deltas, and I've previously reviewed their Atom 2 and have since upgraded that to an Atom 2.5 EX dual extruder machine. The Atom 3 is their new high-end machine, but on the low end, they are now actually manufacturing a 3D printer for Monoprice. It's kind of like the older and simpler Atom 2, but it's way less complex. So they have custom aluminum extrusions, magnetically coupled fiber rods, glass fiber this time, an E3D inspired hot end, and a touchscreen, with a basic but very usable interface nonetheless. It's still a very basic 3D printer, but comes with mostly everything to get you started. Again, that one is available through Monoprice. But the start of the show is obviously their Atom 3, and okay, let me show you its features. First of all, it's always a dual extruder machine, but it only uses a single extruder. So think of this kind of like the second version of Prusa's multi-material setup. It's one extruder and drive gear, but has an additional servo-driven cam that only ever pushes one of the two filaments onto the drive gear. So that saves almost an entire extruder. Speaking of the hot end, that is quite special too. So they've got a dual swiveling hot end setup on there. Almost like Ultimaker lift one of their hot ends in the 3 and S5, but in a single block and I think better restrained on the Atom. It snaps into place magnetically. But wait, there's more. The Atom 3 is also an SLA 3D printer. With the optional LCD VAT upgrade, you can instantly turn your Atom 3 into an SLA fabrication machine, so a resin 3D printer. You replace the effector with an SLA build plate, and the screen on the bottom of the resin VAT plugs straight into the printer's mainboard, so all you need is a USB drive with your sliced file, and off you go. I mean, I've been using the simpler SLA machines that need to plug into a computer the entire time through HDMI, that was just a huge hassle, so seeing this all integrated is definitely a step in the right direction. Pricing for the Atom 3 is going to be around $2,500, but that might still be adjusted. The machines Atom brought to BAM were clearly prototypes. Alright, so let's move on to Printabot. Alright, so I'm here with Brooke from Printabot, and uh, you guys have one, two, three printers to show off that I'm not really too familiar with, at least at the current version, you kind of see and see in that. And yeah, the Printabot Play, it's back, right? I, I have the, the original one, it's so cute, it's so nice. What's, what's up with this one? Well, so the Play, when you build it, you, I asked you about the build process. Yeah, I loved it. It, was, it had injection molded parts, it had very little space to get your hands, and it was hard to upgrade. So this solves all of those problems. Yeah, and so it's beloved by users. They've a lot of people have asked for it back, so it is back, and it can be upgraded now in all the directions if you want. It's, right. it's so much easier to deal with than the old version. Yeah, it's still got the same boxy frame design, but now it's you know the print volume is what four times as large. Yeah, it's six by eight by six, actually a little bit more than six, yeah. seven ish inches. But yeah, inches. Sorry, I don't do millimeters off the top of my head, but. I uh, two, 200 I designed millimeters. That's something. Anyway, yeah, 200, 150, and then 150 to 200. Wow, you're good at that. Okay, so uh, totally lost my train. Oh, I know what I was. Th yeah. The other thing about this is I've made a bunch of printers, and every printer had different parts. We're standardizing as much as we can. So the whole extruder comes off the Simple Pro. The whole bed here 
comes off the Simple Pro. So yeah. you can grab the heat bed upgrade, the same one that's on the Simple Pro goes right onto this, so you can put the heat bed on immediately. Okay. Totally works because, I mean, at the size, not having a heated bed is kind of stretching it, I feel like. I complained about it with the Simple Pro, um, but I, let's actually we check that out. We fixed it for you, man. Yes, let's go over there. All right, so we got the, how are we, right here. All right, so that is the Simple Pro as it stands now. And when I reviewed it, it was a, a bit of a hot mess. Sorry, like the, the software was kind of buggy still. It didn't have a heated bed. Uh, you've worked it You're out. You're great at 3D printing anyway. So. Yeah, and you've brought on the price a lot too, right? Yeah, yeah. So we squeezed it down to really the lowest that I can afford to sell it. So it's at an affordable price. Right. But yes, though, the, the main thing that was bugging you was like you can't do the heat bed in the cloud. And some people just don't like the cloud. So we're working on a Raspberry Pi that looks like all it's the same screen. So the next version that comes out will actually have the option to do Raspberry Pi, all local control with slicing on the pie, with a nice touch screen. But I wanted the ease of use. That's why that thing exists. I wanted newbies to get into it without having to know anything about slicing. So now in the cloud, you can set different tips, different size of beds, which is what, I, and the heat bed works in the cloud. So now I can put that G2 and the touch screen on other printers now. That was the whole point. So now nice. we can start to make it a lot easier. If you just want to buy the electronics and, and do the cloud, then great. If you want to use a Pi, great. It's the same great user interface. All right, so that's, I, I guess that that's your two you know, volume models, basically, the Simple Pro and the Play now at a bit of a lower price point. But you've also got some more experimental stuff going on, right? That you've been kind of hiding behind you. Yeah, so this is, this is the printer belt. In here, there we go. This is the printer belt, and I'm totally embarrassed that it's not printing right now, but it does print, trust me. Uh, Polar 3D, I gotta give them credit. Bill really inspired me. I was at um, Midwest Rep Rap Festival a year ago, and he had this funky hack of this kind of tilted bed, and I was like, what is going on? So this this is a conveyor belt, but it it, it is the Z axis. So this well, is- a, like an angled, you know, between Y and Z kind yeah. of mesh up axis. So it's not a conveyor belt that like you print on it and then it like spits it off, no. Yeah. As it's printing at this angle, it's pushing those layers forward and yeah, you can do really long things or you can do sequential prints, like one after the other, like you can do 100 parts or yeah. the same part or different parts. Yeah, so in, in your finished parts, you're not gonna have the layers, you know, lined up with right. the X and Y, you're actually gonna have it well, basically, the layers are going to be at an angle to your yes, Z-axis. Right? Yeah. yeah, which is kind of interesting. There are limitations to doing this. So you will have to add support in the model where you didn't need it before on some models. But what right. I'm focusing on is design your parts to be 3D printed. You do that anyway, but you will have to design your parts to be printed on this uh, printer belt. But you can optimize them. You get the layers. It kind of helps the strength, you know, because the layers well, in, are... In, in one direction, yeah. If it, right. Yeah, so anyway, it's totally different. And so I'm a little bit, I, I put this in uh, PrinterBot Labs because I'm not, this isn't like ready for newbies at all. Yeah. This will be, uh, you can use the Polar 3D cloud right away and it'll work, but some people don't want the cloud, but you could, uh, the nice thing about that cloud is you can just queue up prints, like put in a hundred different things you want to print and it'll keep going. Then it, it'll, it'll keep going without intervention, right? Yeah. It'll, it'll just spit them off. Yep, that's right, which nice. is cool. So like a print farm, perfect. What about a school? You got like eight printers. Well, you really only need one printer that, to just keep printing all the time. Yeah. So the kids could queue up the prints. So I think once we get it all polished and get some time, I just need print time under my belt with this and feedback. Yeah. So I'm asking the community that are interested in it to you be the first ones to buy it and let's let's learn about how this thing works together. Yeah, and also you, you can buy it and it's $5.99, which I think isn't bad for something this this novel. Yeah, there is margin built into that. So people are like, oh, why wow. isn't it cheaper? Well, I'm publishing the files. You can build your own for as cheap as you want. But that's how I'm going to support the development on this is buy it to support what we're doing and I'll make sure it's easy to use. Everything's open source. Right. Sweet, okay. And like, I guess we, we have one last thing to talk about, which is back here. And it's your largest product that you brought, at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I can move back here. Pretty about CNC V2. So there was a V1, I, I suppose. Um, what is what is your focus with this one? Is it uh, price, accessibility, user experience? What what's your what's your goal? So uh, differentiation is obviously important. So the first 
the PBCNC is what we called it, the V1. That thing was more rigid than really it needed to be. And it was so freaking rigid that it, it, could, it could really easily do metal, but it was expensive, it was $3,000. So um, I really wanted to get the price down. When you, get the, when you start stripping away parts, you can achieve a certain amount of rigidity and it's just more money you know, to make it more rigid. So this is as rigid as it can be at $1,500. This is a completely scalable design. It's also open source. So if you- By the way? Yeah. So I'd always plug that because some people worry about being trapped in. Well, here's the beauty about this machine. So if you get it and use it and you want to uh, add linear rails to it and lead screws, we have a kit for that. So you can upgrade to better motion. Some people think, well, this is flimsy with the belt and the Delrin wheels. Well, really it's not. Well, it, it cuts wood and maybe aluminum just fine, right? Yeah, actually this aluminum piece right here was cut on this machine. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so it will cut aluminum. And belts do stretch over time. You might have to tighten them, you know, but if you want to do away with all that, there's upgrades to linear rail and lead screw. The size of this, just with belt and longer rail, you can make this a bigger size. So we're going to sell a crawlbot size. I'm calling the crawlbot V2, yeah. but it's exactly and the same form factor. Yeah, and if you don't know what the crawlbot is, that, that was like your machine that you put on a full size sheet of plywood and it would run on the edges of that plywood basically without a, having its own frame. Really novel. Some people are using it to great delight, but when I used it, you would get sawdust on the side and you'd have to roll over your own sawdust. Well, this, right. this solves that problem. You didn't have uh, the ability to easily add something like uh, rack and pinion, which I have an upgrade kit for rack and pinion. We can put bigger, uh, the, the, sur the uh, drivers to run bigger motors on the bigger one and it can start to get you know, faster and more powerful. So it's just an expandable system that you can upgrade all kinds of ways. All right. Good stuff. All right, so that's, that's the stuff you guys are working on right now. I guess one last thing, like what is Printabot like? Uh, you guys always seem like you, you go in and out and there's, you know, you have one big product and then there's nothing for a few months. What, what's, what's up with that? Well, you know, in, in really, really strongly CEO-led companies, startups, they take on the personality of the CEO. And I got to tell you, six years being in business, you know, taking off like a explosion with the Kickstarter and then trying to catch up with all of the, you know, crazy orders. We've shipped about 50,000 plus machines in six years wow. and we make them all there. You know what I mean? So we make them in Sacramento. We got some local makers that, like, you know, businesses that did the folded metal and stuff. But it has been a ride, man. And it's actually been pretty hard on me. I, I swear I've lost years off of my life doing this. When the market's up, you know, I'm flying high and I'm, I'm really excited, but when it's down, which it's been down, you know, you really, it's hard to deal with very hard things. So I had to downsize and we have downsized by probably two thirds. And so we're a very small team, we're still in the same place, but now we're stable again, like with the cash flow. So that's just been a rough go for the last two years, but we've recovered, we're healthy, I've got ideas, we're still innovating, we're doing, obviously you can yeah. see we're doing new uh, stuff. You are, yeah. So yeah, if you haven't heard me from me for a year, worry about me because I'm not doing well, but I am now. Right. So yeah. Awesome. Good to hear. All right. Thanks for your time. You bet. And uh, great to see you, Tom. Okay, so that concludes my coverage from Bay Area Maker Fair for this year. I might go back next year. Let me know if you'd like to see more content from this sort of events or even from other maker fairs. For example, I'll be at the first ever Prague Maker Fair just this weekend, actually tomorrow. Let me know what you'd like to see from there in the comments below. Hint, hint, it is literally right next door to Prusa's headquarters. Hope you enjoyed this one. See you in the next one.